The Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons are a modern marvel of gaming technology. Inside these little things is some impressive stuff going on like the HD rumble and uh, buttons. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they are still kind of just flat rectangles. So they're not the most comfortable to use, which is where companies like Nixie come in with products like their new Joy Pads. Retailing at $69.99, but as of this recording, on sale for $43.99, the Nixie Joy Pads are probably the most comfortable way that I've ever played a Nintendo Switch in handheld mode. That's even more comfortable, possibly, than the Skull & Co Neo Grip I just reviewed. And thank you to Nixie for sending these out for review. I've actually never used third-party Joy-Cons before, it's my first experience with them. I'm actually pretty surprised, I wasn't expecting a lot from these, and uh, well, we're gonna get into why I like them, and some things I maybe don't like as much. Mine came in a box that looks like this, but on Nixie's website there's a box that looks like this, so you might get this, or you might get this. Who knows? Either way, you're gonna get the same product inside the box. You've got the left and right joypad, the center frame that you can use to connect them and use like a controller, a USB-C charging cable, and no power brick. But fortunately, the other side of the power cable is USB-A, so chances are you can charge them just fine. Each joypad has a USB-C port on the bottom for charging, but you can connect these to the switch and then dock it to charge them just like you would a normal Joy-Con. At least, that's how it seems to work because I have not plugged these into the USB cables at all and just charged through the dock. They have about 8 hours of advertised playtime and 20 hours of standby time and I have not charged them in the weeks that I've been using them exclusively other than docking them on the Switch and it seems to work just fine. You've got your usual buttons you'd expect to see on a Switch controller, including the home and share buttons. The X, Y, A, and B buttons are all bigger than you'd find on a Joy-Con, but not quite as big as what you'd find on an official Pro Controller. But you've also got some additional buttons on the back. Each one has an M button and a T button for programming a macro to this third button on the back, this rectangular one, which can be assigned to whichever button is on that same Joy-Con. So if I wanted to assign a B button, to the left Joy-Con, I couldn't, but I could assign it to the right one. The T button in the back is for programming a turbo button, and you can even set that turbo function to the macro as well. So if you're playing a game where you want to spam a button, like Animal Crossing for example, where you might want to just spam A to match through crafting or boring conversations you've heard every day, you just sit back and relax while the game plays itself for you. The control sticks are pretty nice, they're textured unlike the official Joy-Cons. They work perfectly fine, I haven't experienced any real kind of drift. I do notice that every once in a while, instead of drift, I'll be moving my character in Animal Crossing, for example. That's mainly what I've been playing if it hasn't been obvious. And they'll just kind of stop moving while I'm still holding the stick. It happens just every once in a great while. Like I said, I've been using this exclusively in place of Joy-Cons for weeks now and it's happened maybe three or four times. It could also just be a problem with my unit. Again, it's very rare that it happens. Now here's where the real gamer stuff comes into play because each of the thumbsticks has an RGB ring around it. That's cool, right? RGB makes you play better. There it is, you got RGB. These are gonna make you a pro at your mobile version of Fortnite. You can hold the T button in the back and click in the thumbstick to change the color of the RGB. You've got different breathing modes, you've got a tricolor mode with red, blue, and green that in my opinion does not look very good, or you can just do what I do and set it to a specific color that you want. One minor problem, and it's more of an annoyance than an actual issue, is specifically on the left joypad. On the left joypad, because of the higher placement of the thumbstick, there are times where I will move the thumbstick all the way down, and the full LED bulb back there will be visible in the corner of my eye, kind of just blinding me a little bit. It's just a little annoying just kind of having that, that spot right there in your eye. So if you're sensitive to bright lights or you, you want to retain your vision, that's something to consider. Another concern that I have is at times the LEDs will just turn on when the switch is asleep. I'll have my switch just sitting there and I'll see the lights turn on on their own and they'll just stay on for like a few minutes. It's a little bit annoying and a little bit concerning as well for battery drain and just overall battery life of the product itself and the switch. 
You can obviously use these in handheld mode. They connect to the Switch just like a regular Joy-Con would. It even makes the little sound and animation like a Joy-Con would. I guess I wasn't expecting that from a third-party Joy-Con since I've never used one, but it was kind of cool to see that it just works. There's nothing special you have to do. And then you can just remove them from the Switch and you can use them wirelessly as well. And it also works very easily. On the right one, you just hold the home button or on the left, you hold the share button, the capture button, whatever that button is called, and it will wirelessly connect to the Switch without any problems or weird workarounds. Even the 8-bit Do controller, which I love, doesn't do that. You have to press start and one of the face buttons, and I never remember which one it is for the Switch. It's a little annoying. So the fact that you can just seamlessly connect these wirelessly to the Switch, I like that. That's a plus. You can use these in docked mode, you can use them in handheld mode and hold them just like this, or you can connect them to the frame that's included and use them like a controller. It's just a piece of plastic with no electronics or anything in it. In fact, the railings that you connect to it are also plastic, and so there's an ever so slight amount of give to the point where it's actually pretty tough to connect the controllers to this, and I would not try to connect a regular Joy-Con to this because I tried and it stopped like this far in and I did not want to force it because I don't want to break anything. You can actually also hold these sideways like you can with a regular Joy-Con, but because of their shape, it's super uncomfortable and I would not recommend it. Seriously, I tried it just to try it and my hand cramped within a minute. It has the little shoulder button so you really could do it if you absolutely wanted to, but just don't, just don't do that. Now my biggest complaint with the Nixie Joy Pads is the vibration motor. The manual says by default out of the box there at 50 50% and my gosh, when I read that I near had an aneurysm because these things are super loud. They are definitely not HD rumble, that is for sure. There's times where I'm playing, a, again, Animal Crossing and I'm doing something where there's just repetitive vibration and you can just feel the earthquake in my hand. When, when the room is quiet, you can just hear every single thing I'm doing causing this thing to just go off. You can toggle between five I think 25, 50, and 100%. And really, I kind of feel like they all feel pretty much the same with the exception of 5%, which is what I have it set to now. And even that is still pretty extreme in comparison to most official controllers for any other system, including the Switch and Xbox and anything else. It's more funny to me than it is a problem. But again, it's just something I want to make you guys aware of in case it might be a deal breaker for you. And if it is not a deal breaker, I would definitely consider looking into these. Even at full retail of $70, that's still $10 less than a pair of official Joy-Cons, and unless you really need official Joy-Cons, these could be a good alternative for a more comfortable option as opposed to carrying around a grip case. I would say that this, for the price, is actually a very surprisingly decent and maybe even very viable option for an alternative for you if you're looking for something more comfortable for more long time use and not really willing to pay the full $80 for another pair of Joy-Cons if you already have a few laying around at home. If you are interested, I do have affiliate links in the description. This video is not sponsored per se, these just were sent out to me for free, this is not paid at all, I only make a little bit of money if you purchase specifically through my affiliate links. As always, I'm allowed to say whatever I want to say about these, as I have done for you throughout this whole video. Great product, really good for the price, has some issues to be careful of. If you're cool with that, check them out. And that is all the time I have for you here today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Nixie, for sending these out for review. I will continue to use these, and uh, if anything happens in the future and uh, there's any kind of problems, maybe I'll make an update video. But for now, I'm using these still because they're really comfortable and super, super nice. And uh, I really appreciate their value. And I really appreciate your value because you're valuable and you're loved. And thank you for watching this video. Consider liking, commenting, and subscribing and sharing this video with a friend. Other than that, I'm out. Peace out. Happy New Year.